one board member who's on his way just a couple minutes to get here. So you guys can chat for a minute, and I promise we'll get started mm -hmm. as quickly as soon as he writes. Right there. Did you, you try to stall that? Can I just go out here for a second before we get started until I'll get sent to my all right, Matt, you need a okay. second? No, nope, you're good. You ready? All right. All right, good evening. We are pleased to have you here with us tonight, and we re welcome the Spring Creek and Elko wrestlers, and we're glad to have you here and be able to celebrate your accomplishments. Please join us for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge, I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. My item 1.3 is approval of the agenda. Move to approve the agenda. Second. Thank you. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion? All in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed, nay? Chair votes aye and the agenda is approved. Item 1.3 or 1.4 is the school wrestling achievement recognition. So we will get started with that. Um, Susan is going to read the names. Um, if we missed anybody, coaches, please let us know. Cassie did an amazing job getting these certificates ready. Um, we will just go ahead and since you guys are seated over here, we'll come over here, Susan and I will. Um, if you want to come and, you know, give knuckles to the board all the way across, that's up to you. Um, but if, Susan, if you'll bring those up, we'll go ahead and get started. All right, thanks, Ron. So Susan's going to call out your name and just come on up and we'll shake your hands. And like I say, you're welcome to go across in front of the board or you can just, whatever makes you happy and feel celebrated. We're glad to have you here. Want me to read this part first too? Okay, we have Wells team third place. And I'm sorry if I butcher your name, so please correct me. Jade Glasscock. Wells isn't here. Mm -hmm. Good job, Wells. Congratulations, Wells. I can do that. So, Wells, team third place, Jake Glasscock. Sure. Thomas French. Tanner Hall, Celius Mercado, Lucas Peavy, Pedro Casas, and then, yay. And then Wells individual medalist, Jake Glasscock, Thomas French, Tanner Hall, Celius Mercado, Pedro Casas, Lucas PV. It takes a village to get all this done. Okay, now we have Spring Creek individual medalists. They're here, right? Yes, okay. Spring Creek in the house? <laughs> yep. Okay, Joe Gillespie. Jake Bradford. <laughs> Thank you. Wesley Rickapore. Is that right? Oh, it is. Congratulations. <laughs> Colton Brown. Congratulations. Taryn Morganson. Without an R? Sorry, correct to that for you. 
Kiefer Campbell. Congratulations. Sean Lordy. Okay, and so now we have Spring Creek High School team. Team state, sorry. Thank you, state runner up. Joe Gillespie. Should have done them together. Congratulations. Jake Bradford. Congratulations. Wesley Rickapur. Congratulations. Colton Brown. Taryn Mogelson. Kiefer Campbell. Sean Lordy. Welcome back. Good job, Spring Creek High School. Why don't you come up and oh. say <laughs> <laughs> no price. Uh -oh. All right, we got Anthony Ward. Simon Matt. Wyatt Bradford. Matt Lloyd. Connor Clough, Logan Austin, Jackson Taylor, Okay, so now we have Elko High School state champions. And individual medalists at the same time. And then Jeff or Matt, one of you just poke her get the matching state one. Is there any names? Same thing come on up. <laughs> okay, Camden Jensen. Congratulations. Marco Romero. Congratulations. Craig Slater. Blaze Jones. I'm up here. Okay. Elliot Lehman. Congratulations. Kale Sellers. Eli Finlayson. Finlayson. Did I mispronounce your name? <laughs> What's the proper name? Finlayson. Thank you. <laughs> Congratulations. <laughs> Aiden Rodriguez. Congratulations. 
Congratulations. Christian Felix. Noah Chacon. I'm not sure how to say the last name. Caden Haas, is that right? Congratulations. Uh, Andres Flores. Congratulations. Leonard Dahl. Congratulations. Luke Bennett. Congratulations. Hey, congratulations, Elko High School. Got them all? Okay, good job. All right, just as you're leaving, guys, congratulations again for your hard work. And we know wrestling is not easy. So way to go, both teams. Congratulations. Keep up the good work. Yes. It's just impressive. They said on the same side of the room. Yes, thank you. Yes. <laughs> okay, my computer does not want to work. Today. Congratulations. All right, I just try to get my computer up. It's, it keeps like just going off and it's plenty of power. All right, we'll go ahead and move on to item 1.5, a Flag View STEM Club presentation. Please come on up. <laughs> Hello, everyone. We are here with Flag View Intermediate School with our STEM Club. STEM teaches students science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. I want to share what a wonderful program this is for our students. STEM club is for both fifth grade students and sixth grade students. We have about 10 to 26 continuously returning students that participate every Tuesday and Thursday from 3.30 to 4.30 after school. This program has been made possible by a grant. Our administration worked to get this program started at Five U. Our administration has provided us with training and materials that, um, with the impressive curriculum of Project Lead the Way. Project Lead the Way provides transformative learning experiences for students and teachers across the US. It creates an engaging hands-on environment and empowers students to develop in-demand knowledge and skills they need to thrive. It also supports, oh, it also supports the need to engage students in real-world learning, empowers them to solve real-world challenges. In the end, it inspires them to reimagine how they see themselves. Here's a short video of Project Lead the Way and what we are providing our students with.
So that was a video on Project Lead the Way, that program that we're using at our schools, or sorry, at Five View um, for STEM Club. Um, we know that our students have the qualities of great designers and innovators. We are excited. Whoa, sorry. <laughs> okay, sorry about that. Um, so we know our students have the qualities of great designers and innovators. We are excited to provide them with the resources of Project Lead the Way to adopt a design thinking mindset through compelling activities, projects, problems that will build upon other and relate to the world around them. What Project Lead the Way does is tap into their exploratory nature, engaging them in learning that feels like play and encourages them to keep discovering now and for years to come. Students have completed a lesson on engineering, um, which is energy and collisions, where they learned about potential and kinetic energy. They designed a vehicle that would protect an egg from cracking once it collided against the wall after riding down a ramp. The student's goal was to add features to the car that would protect the egg from cracking. Students designed very successful cars and we had a couple, only a couple of few cracked eggs. Both our fifth graders and sixth graders are working on stability and motion, forces and interactions. They are learning about effort force, resistance force, simple machines, levers, wheels and axles and pulleys. They are building their models with our VEX kits. Our final activity in this lesson will be they will save a tiger with a simple machine where we learned about endangered species. Here are some photographs of our students at play working together to become collaborative problem solvers. So our flag and intermediate STEM club. We have some students working with our VEX kits, building their models, inspire, engaging and empowering them more students hard at work and at play. So I would like to invite some students that would like to share some of their experiences with STEM Club. Who wants to go first? <laughs> I'm Mrs. Alexander. I'm one of the. I'm fine. I'm Mrs. Alexander. I'm one of the advisors for sixth grade, and I work with the fifth grades also. This is Zoe, and she's sixth grader, and she wants to speak about STEM club. Hi, everybody. It is an honor to be here. My name is Zoe Squires. My group pre previously made an amazing machine. It is known as a simple machine. I will talk about the process. We started out with domino and a car track across a whiteboard. We use a Hot Wheel car to travel across and hit a marble to destroy a Lego structure. But we had realized that it isn't going to work. One of my team members, Raul, had made these really cool magnets. We used one of the magnets to make the car track tilt upward. We, we put the car track at the front of the whiteboard. Once we had the track to stay into in a, in a position, we got two marbles and put them on the top, uh, middle of the whiteboard. Hector, another teammate, had taped pop popsicle sticks together. We put we put it at the end of the whiteboard, and I put the Lego structure at the bottom. Our our machine worked when no one was looking, but when our group presented it, it didn't work. But that was okay. At least we knew it was a successful machine the first couple of times. Some of you may be wondering, why is this girl here and why did she join, join STEM club? It is my dream, well, it is my dream 
to become a conservationist. I tried to join all of the activities that relate to STEM. Once I reach my dream, I will do whatever it takes to make the world a better place and help the environment. <laughs> this is Hayden, she's also a sister. Hi, my name is Hayden, and the reason like why I like STEM Club is because we get to make things with our friends and build crazy things like the A Clark collision and other stuff like that. This is Leela, she's also a sixth grader. Okay, so I am a student in Blackview STEM Club and it's awesome. The VEX kits are really fun to use and our projects are pretty neat. Recently, we did a Rube Goldberg kind of thing and mm, me and my partner, Hayden, <laughs> um, we made Mrs. Alexander's elf on the shelf fall off of her Christmas tree into a ball pit, which was a whole bunch of crumple, crumpled balls. And um, it's really awesome. <laughs> I would like to thank you guys and end with a special note that we will be diving into robotics. So um, some is gonna use robotics with part of the way. So we have some exciting projects for these students. Thank you. I'm Heather Johnson. I'm the fifth grade advisor. I do have a couple that wanted to share a couple of things that we've done in fifth grade STEM. Parker. The first thing we did was we learned about bacteria and what, how they're spread and what they do. Then we learned about the brain and how it sends waves to the five senses and the rest of the body. And we, after that, we learned about how the brain gets concussions and, or, and how to stop them. Then after we, learned, we started doing forces and motions, which was the, which was the VEX kits, and we, we started building simple machines with the VEX kits, and we're trying to figure out how to get a how to get the tiger out of the hole in the in the cage, whatever it's called, so that with the simple machines. And this is Ariana. Um, so we started by learning about bacteria and viruses, and then we did, um, then we did stuff like, like the brain and the nervous system, and input and output, and then we did, um, like forces and building simple machines with the VEX kit. And yeah. So we just have some other students I just want to like introduce because they're amazing. They come every week. Okay, this is Devro and Janae. And then we have Kylie, you're not speaking. You decided not to <laughs> roll. And then Ryland. And we have a great group of kids at the sixth grade that come. And we are very fortunate to have this program. So we're hoping to be able to get more training and to be able to expand it out. We do it in our classrooms also if we are trained in it. And so this Project Lead the Way is a really cool curriculum and a really cool thing for our students. So thank you for letting us come and present. Thank you for coming and students, thank you for presenting to us. We appreciate hearing what you're doing and the things you love. And I wanna know how many of you guys think it's more fun to knock stuff down with what you build than the building part? <laughs> We appreciate you being here and welcome you back anytime to share your fun experiences with us. So thank you again.
And we are going to hop backwards in the agenda for just a moment to item 1.4 because we have um, one wrestler that we would like to congratulate who was able to make it. So Susan, would you like to read that one off and um, go ahead and come up and we'll shake your hand and have you come be congratulated by the board. This is Jay, Jake Glasscock, right? Congratulations. Congratulations, Jake. Thanks for coming. Thanks for coming from Wells. Good job. Well, Jake, thank you for being here. We're we're glad to have you here and congratulations on your hard work Definitely. and uh, your achievements. Yeah. Well, we're gonna give you another round of applause and, and it looks like mom. You, you are welcome. I just wanted to thank the board for the opportunity for uh, sports. Once for one thing, um, we want to thank the principal there, Mr. Dr. Higby, has been amazing. You guys have a jewel there. He's super principal, um, very supportive. And uh, Mr. Woolsey, the athletic director as well, has been very supportive, even though he's a basketball guy. He's <laughs> He's been on, in our corner with the wrestling, and we want to thank also Wells Electric. They provided a facility for these guys to be able to practice, and, and also the coaches, amazing coaches that really took them all the way, and very proud of him. Thank you. Thank you. All right, we will hop to 1.6, input from the public. This is a period devoted to comments by the general public, if any, and discussion of those comments. In the interest of privacy and due process, the public is requested to not raise personnel issues except in a legally noticed closed personnel session of the board. Comments are limited to three consecutive minutes. A speaker's time may not be reserved, divided, apportioned, or deferred. No action may be taken upon a matter raised under this item of the agenda until the matter itself has been included specifically on an agenda as an item upon which action will be taken. So this is a non-action item. And um, we just wanted to add that if you have something for the board, um, you're welcome to just bring it over here to Cassie and she will distribute it to the board so we can kind of keep the flow of the board meeting going. Is there anyone who wishes to make a comment this evening? All right, quiet crowd. Well, we're glad you're here. Even if you're not gonna comment, we will move on to item 2.1. This is item, that reads, any action deemed appropriate to the evaluation of interim superintendent Anderson. This is for possible action. <clears throat> Madam Chairman, I'd like to make a motion move to hire CJ Anderson as a permanent superintendent, remove the interim title. Okay, do we have a second? All right, I will Don't. second that motion. <laughs> You're, you, I'm going to beat you to it. <laughs> All right, discussion from the board. I, uh, we've put a lot of pressure on CJ, and I, I think he's answered the bell. And yeah. done a good job, and we want him to keep working hard. And it, um, it's a lot of work to find a superintendent, but I think we've found one that that's going to do good things in this district. Thank you. Any other thoughts or items from the board discussion? I would echo the sentiment that I think he's done a great job. We've seen in the evaluation uh, that we've all gone through. I mean, certainly there's things to be worked on, but uh, as a whole, and also with what we're facing in the current labor market and everything, I, I, don't, I don't see how we could do any better. I mean, I, I really am happy with the job he's been doing. I wasn't, uh, there really wasn't what much on this agenda item. So I wasn't certain what it was to be completely honest, but you know, hearing that and hearing, hearing your motion, I, I would agree with you. All right. Other thoughts from the board? Yeah, I can't, uh, I can't speak high enough about CJ and his responses and his actions and his, um, just his overall involvement in Elko County. He's like dove, dove deep right into all of the school districts. So, and I actually get that from a lot of my practice members as well. So not just 
uh, on the street, but also in my clinic. Um, it's a part of, and uh, the lots of praises, lots of praise. So yeah, the same thing though as Jeff. I'm uh, didn't know what it was, but I um, appreciate of it, and I like it. Okay, well, there you go. <laughs> I'll throw in my two cents. Um, I kind of like to let things go a little bit longer, but I totally understand. And in four, I mean, you're doing a great job, Mr. Anderson. So um, I can go along with it. I just, like I said, sometimes I like a little bit longer, but that's okay. All right. And I would agree. This is a, a very short window that we've we've given you to perform in. And I think that you've performed admirably. I think the evaluation that was presented two weeks ago um, spoke to that as well. I was unsure as to what what this action item was or at least this agenda item was. So uh, so I'm, I'm echo echoing that as well. And shame on me for not asking the questions that I normally do. I just kind of figured, all right, we'll see what this does. So, um, um, so I appreciate everything that you have done, very much so. I I've spent countless hours with you and uh, you've, you've asked, or I've, you've answered all of the questions that I've had with the ones that you couldn't do immediately. You got back to me within less than 24 hours. I really appreciate your responsiveness, the feedback that I've gotten from the community, the feedback that I've gotten from the, um, the other board members from the staff that I have visited with. I think, I think you've done a great job with all of that said, I support the motion in the hiring. I just don't support the motion in the timing because if we didn't know what this was, I think it would have been better for us. And I think it is better for us to make sure that the community knows what it is that we're doing as far as from an action. So I cannot say clear enough, I support CJU moving forward as the permanent, the permanent superintendent. I will be voting no against this motion only because of the timing. Thank you. All right, and I'll just, um, since I work on putting this agenda together, Cassie and I went back and we looked at how it was worded in the past and we just did what was worded in the past. This is how it's been worded is any action deemed appropriate. And so um, this was up to the board to discuss whatever action they chose. And uh, Mr. Wines came out with a motion right away and uh, the board has the right to discuss and, and move forward or do anything else as far as the superintendent's evaluation went. So um, I support this motion. I have been part of looking for superintendents for longer than I would like to say. Um, I think there are probably not a lot of board members that have had to look for superintendents as frequently as we have. And um, I am very much in favor of having someone here, having some stability and some enthusiasm for this position. So I am very much in favor of this motion. Um, I will just say we will need to sit down with Mr. Anderson and go through um, a little negotiating on a contract and the contract will come back to the board at um, probably the next meeting, but that has to happen before, you know, before everything is final. So, if the board chooses to vote in favor of moving forward with this, there will be an action item with a contract for everyone to be able to see. All right, any other questions or discussion from the board before we proceed with the motion? I would take public comment. There we go. Thank you, Madam President, and members of the board. My name is Lee Hoffman. This is absolutely nothing against Mr. Anderson's performance, but I think you're very close to uh, having an issue with the uh, open meeting and agenda. Uh, I actually agree with what Mr. McCarty just said. Your agenda talks about what is appropriate to the evaluation and you haven't given the public the opportunity to understand you are maybe gonna make a decision about a, a permanent position. And uh, I think the motion to hire is probably not the right motion. 
Uh, I think it would be better to make a motion that you're ready to enter into negotiations of, of the contract. And like I said, I think you're very much on the edge of, of open meeting issues. And again, nothing against Mr. Anderson. I, I agree, I think he's done a fine job. Thank you. Right. Thank you, Mr. Hoffman. Is there anyone else who wishes to make a comment? All right, any other discussion from the board? Okay, we do have a motion on the floor. All in favor of, let's say, moving forward with the hiring process. You okay with that, Ira? <laughs> and who, the second, is that all right? To, who had the second, Jeff? No, I did, I did. I'm okay with the second. <laughs> all right, um, please yeah, can say Can we aye. get the exact wording of the, the motion again? All right, Ira, so would you like to give the exact wording of the motion? I move to hire CJ to move forward in the hiring process of CJ Anderson. All right, then I'm good with that second. All right, all in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed, nay? Nay. Nay. Okay, we have two nays, and the chair votes aye, so the motion carries. We will bring a uh, contract back to the board after we enter into negotiations with Mr. Anderson and that contract will be attached to the um, agenda for everyone to be able to see. Thank there, you, Madam Chair, and yes. congratulations again. I'm happy that we are moving forward um, in this direction again, just the timing, so, um, so thank you. And I appreciate the explanation as to previous superintendents being handled this way. That, uh, that also you know, helps me with knowing that there was some precedent. Mm -hmm. yeah. All right, is there any other action deemed appropriate to this evaluation that anyone would like to discuss before we move on to item 2.2? Madam Chair, is there a decision as to who will be on any subcommittee or evaluation of, of the negotiations, or is that gonna be between the board chair and relevant parties? In the past, it has been usually the board chair and the board clerk and potentially one other board member. And uh, Mr. Anderson, is there any other things you wanna discuss about who sits on that, in that position to negotiate your contract? Um, if we'd like to handle it differently, that is also up for discussion right I, now. I like you all just fine. Um, I think Susan, you were in the last one we did for the interim contract, correct? So if you wanna continue with that for continuity sake, that's fine, but I'm, I'm, I have no qualms or thought about who else is in there. It's fine, whatever you choose. And please remind me, Ira, were you there as well? So we did have three of the six of us. Mm -hmm. Okay, I just wanted, I don't want us to get into a snafu yeah, there either. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Four. Okay, great, thank you. Just wanted to double check, make sure we're good. Yeah, no, that's cool. fine. So I, I will open it up to the board is, would we like to change who sits in on that um, negotiation of the contract? Happy to make a formal motion that the three trustees that negotiated the interim contract continue to work with the negotiation for the permanent contract. Okay, is there a second? I'd second that. All right, we have a motion and a second. Any discussion? If they're willing. <laughs> Generally, that's good. I'm willing. <laughs> all right, if there's no other discussion, um, all in favor of the Three, which would be Ira, myself, and Susan, who negotiated the interim superintendent contract to negotiate a full-time superintendent contract. Please say aye. 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 Can you oppose nay? Okay, chair votes aye, and that is approved. Again, we will be bringing that back for um, the board to see and for everyone in the public to see as well. We'll move on to item 2.2, discussion and possible approval. State Bank. This is for possible action. Julie. Hello. So our credit card program with Wells Fargo ended at the end of January. We were looking at increased fees and switching to a new program, which entailed reissuing all our cards. So I figured I'd look around and see what other programs were out there. Um, and I recommend Nevada State Bank. They'll be more local. We'll have local contacts. I think um, 
it'll be a cost savings when they offer cash back towards our purchases. Um, can you answer any questions? I, I had one for you, just based on uh, your negotiations with Nevada State Bank. Um, like for example, the program we've run into has just run out. Is there any time guarantees or contract or anything of that nature with Nevada State Bank? Are we going to run into this in no. a couple of years? Um, so according to Wells Fargo, we should have never been on the program we're on. So they switched platform and wouldn't move us to this. The program's still there, but they won't move us to that new platform for the same program, unless we link a personal social security number to it. Yeah. So um, it's not really that it expired or anything. It's that they realized we they could no longer keep us on the program they had us on for years. God bless them. Yeah. <laughs> All right, any other questions for Julie? Yes, ma'am. Go ahead. Julie, thank you very much. I appreciate the effort that you put into this. In your memo, uh, you indicate, sorry, memo dated February 28th of 2022, you indicated you'd called the three banks and feel that NSB would meet the needs, uh, that it would be able to provide a little to no cost credit card program. So little to no cost is a range. Do we know how little of a cost that would be if it's not no cost? I don't think there is a cost, but you know, random. It seems like whenever you do something with a bank, you always pay something. Some sort so of I didn't feel comfortable okay. seeing no cost, but really it's no cost. We'll be getting cash back and they don't charge a fee. Okay. And you indicated that you called three local banks. NSB was the one that you had chosen. Why not the other two? So Elko Federal Credit Union, they were real nice but they outsourced their credit card program, we'd be dealing with a 1-800 number, which we already deal with now. And it takes the point out of a local bank. Um, and the third bank I called, the phone message kept directing me to their website and I couldn't even talk to anybody. So I didn't want to deal with that all the time either. Okay. So. Thank you. And you also mentioned the branches too were... Yeah, so went over in a Wells. Yep. So there's one in Spring Creek. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. Um, Wells and Wendover. So I'm working on getting a proposal from them to see if there is a cost savings to move all our other accounts there as well. But that'll be later once we know what the numbers look like. But yeah, that would be pretty nice to have local banks for our schools. I'm sure I have no other questions. Thank you. Okay. Anyone else have any questions? Just thank you for no putting problem. in the work for that. Do we have a motion? I'm sure move. Mm -hmm. Actually, you know what? I make enough motions. Make Go a ahead, lot Jeff. of motions. <laughs> I was just going to say, I'd like to make a motion that we move the district credit card program from Wells Fargo to Nevada State Bank. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any other discussion? All in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed, nay? Chair votes aye, and that is approved. Julie, thank you for your work. And it is great to be working with just a local bank and having the, those branches in different locations will yeah. be, I think, incredibly helpful for our schools. So yep. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Julie. All right. And just speaking for the, the branch in Wendover, I know that they're really good. They've come out, even though I don't bank with them, uh, they stop in my business every so often. Alina is really great out there. So I feel like we'd be in good hands with them. Item 2.3 is receipt review and possible approval of the spring incentive grant applications. All right, Mr. Anderson, Cassie, who's handled this one? <laughs> okay, so there are, let's see, nine applications. Um, the incentive grants are twice a year and the highest amount that we can award is $3,000. And the school must either match that amount or greater, but no less. Um, we did have one other application from, I think it was Elko High School, but I had to turn that down because the match wasn't for the full amount of what they were requesting. Were they able to reduce their, I don't know what the process is, were they able to reduce the request to the level that would be no, able to match? No, they were requesting um, high-priced items. Okay. So they weren't able to, they're gonna try next year. 
Okay. I apologize for interrupting. Please continue. Oh, I'm just done. Okay. <laughs> All right, questions for Cassie or anything about regarding this agenda item? I had a little bit of curiosity. I went through quite a few of these items to check on the pricing, mm -hmm. you know, to make sure we're getting the best deal. And I, for the most part, they all are market price. So, but I was curious how the procurement of all this stuff is this based on like each individual class does their own ordering or, or no. I'm sorry, each applicant or does it go through? No, so any grant within the district, all purchases go through our office, all payroll goes through our office, and then all of the applications, even if somebody wants to apply for a private grant, that needs to go through our office. So once they are awarded, I ask for the check for the match amount, and then I deposit that into the incentive grant account within the appropriate revenue code. I then adjust that budget and then we make the purchase within our office using that account code. So if you were to look at the revenues through the year, you could see what match was coming in. So like, for example, on Wendover, well, it was last in the fall, Wendover got those bleachers. The mm -hmm. city gave us, you could check and you could see in there that the city of Wendover gave us $9,800. Which, which by the way, those are up now and uh, mm -hmm. looking good, so. Yes. So yeah, the um, check has to come first before we even order anything. And then I go through it and make sure that everything's correct and they're still within budget. I think, well, that was part of the question, but also what I was uh, inferring was, is there any kind of check and balance as far as the pricing? Well, I, I go through and look at it, but say I hadn't looked at it. I mean, are, do we have any other checks to make sure that like we're not paying too much for an iPad? Well, if it comes to technology, it has to be ordered through our department. Like iPads, we don't order them through Amazon. We have our own district account through Apple that we order, and then we get an education deal. Right. Um, okay. And then the same with IT. For like the most part, um, if the item is over a certain amount, then I ask the principals or the instructors to get bids. Um, for a lot of the cases, since we have rural areas, the bids usually come, sure. you might get two you were not going to get always the three one of those that jumped out at me i believe it was the yeah grammar document cameras uh that i went looking for those and there's quite a range of pricing on mm -hmm. those uh, but it seemed like they were getting about the right price i think it was 6.99 and i found them online for right in there six to seven hundred dollars so. yeah and we have a committee that meets before we even submit the applications to you guys and more so, we're looking to make sure that they're ordering products through IT that will be supported. Yeah. In that case, Mac is looking at that document camera to make sure that it's going to work with our smart boards. Right. So, and then we have the directors there if there's any curriculum being requested to make sure that that's allowable. Um, but we have, you know, different Casey Kelly sometimes is involved if there's any capital improvement requests. Yeah, I just so. want to make sure they're vetted. Before yeah, we have multiple actually, people but, looking at the applications yeah, just to make sure that we're not wasting funds. Any other questions? I have a couple comments. Mm -hmm. um, one is about the, the budget that they have um, versus the quotes they have down below. Um, I think they should match. And, um, so just a comment for that. I would rather see them uh, so we can like see them filled out and then see the um, amounts the same from the quotes that they are up in the budget. Um, and and like I said, just another comment really, are these online that they could fill them out electronically versus? No. Okay. Because sometimes I have a hard time with the handwriting, but as long as your committee can read it, I can always ask that one. No, then, I, I could convert it to a fillable PDF. Um, I don't guarantee that everybody will fill it out, but I can send it back and tell them to. But I just, for me, I think we should start going a direction of why are we filling out things by hand, but then I'm writing some things by hand. So that's <laughs> <laughs> I can't you. complain. Um, and the other thing, and maybe this isn't the time um, for it or um, just something to think about. Um, since it's an incentive, it says incentive grant, 
Um, and I'm not opposed to any of these and, and what they have them for. It's, it's not that at all. But under project description, it, it talks about, you know, attached plans or drawings um, include grade level number of students impacted by your project. And I just feel like some of these aren't really a project. Um, and I don't know if it seems like they've drifted away from that over the years. I'm not just saying these. So I don't know if that's something uh, we want to pay attention to or if it really doesn't matter. Um, I'm not, like I said, I'm, I'm not opposed to what these people have put in for. Um, but to me, it's not really uh, what it was intended to do when it first started. That's just my opinion, and I don't want to step We've on We've also, um, I've spoke with Julie. We've also discussed in the following years, especially with our current funding situation, that we might bump up the cap on what's allowable because we do have some schools that require maintenance or they require projects that are, you know, a higher capital threshold. Um, if we were to able to increase the amount that they contributed and that we awarded, um, we kind of were thinking to move towards that direction just so it would take some money, you know, some weight away from the general fund. Yeah, I, I like the idea of a, a little bit more money for them um, for a project, for something that you normally couldn't do otherwise without this. Um, in, it, instead of some of the other things I feel like are <coughs> either basics that should be coming out of a school budget or something. So thank you for looking into that. Mm -hmm. All right. Any other questions? I do. So what is the general turnaround on these as soon as if, if approved? What's the general turnaround as far as like um, cost going, getting out of control currently? Like do you foresee the budget's going to be busted if we don't get out? Or is it like, is there a time frame that you're going to get the fu the funds? Like it's literally you get the check and then you'll mm -hmm. turn around within a couple yeah, of days. This could so, be a couple of days to a week. So let's see, tomorrow, if I have time, probably not, but maybe the next day I'll send out award letters. And then I've already had some people, applicants call me asking if it's been approved. So for the most part, within the next two weeks, once I get award letters out, then I'll get those matching funds and we'll get it ordered. Okay. It's Thanks. pretty fast process. Is that, does that answer your question? Okay. I was just asking because I'm trying to buy supplies for my office and I, look at um, it and then a couple of days later it's more dollars and a couple of days um, later we're all with seeing the it. amount of purchases we have going through our office we need to push them out so we can close out the year without going crazy okay <laughs> okay Madam right, chair if i may yep sorry I, but i'm glad everybody else got their questions in so thank you <laughs> i would agree with with susan um it would be nice to make sure that that the amounts match um with where we are and and I, I'm not saying that's the committee's responsibility. I think it does go back to, um, to the submission, those who are submitting it. I hope that they knew that they had plenty of time to work on this. So um, just a little bit more care there. If it can be converted electronically, you're right. I don't know that it needs to be mandated because we like that word this year um, <laughs> or last year. I don't know that it needs to be that way to, you know, to get, get the electronic signatures or electronic filling out. But I certainly type faster than I can write. And my handwriting is not legible, so then it's at least legible if I type it. Um, so I would agree with that. And I apologize, I did I miss here? Did you say there are nine grants? I think so, but I was just kind of browsing. Okay. okay. One, two, three. No. Okay. Eight. eight. Okay, good. I just wanted to make sure I hadn't missed one. So I appreciate that. One, nine was the ninth. Was the, the ninth one. Okay, great. Um, so it's called the, to Susan's, to, a little bit to Susan's point, because I don't know what the original intent was. It, it's called an incentive grant. What's the incentive? Is the incentive that, hey, if you spend money, we'll incentivize that by matching it? Okay, great. I just wanted to that's make a, sure. That's my assumption. Yeah. Okay, <laughs> all right. Um, I love the thought of the process. I, you know, having been in a fundraising nonprofit type realm for a number of years, donors like matches. And so being able to match, I think is, is great. I want us to be aware of the budget. I want us to be, you know, consistent there. If there's a way to reduce expenditures by having a higher match, then I would absolutely say, great, let's, let's bump this up as well. So I like that idea, Susan, thank you very much. But what happens when we don't spend the money? 
where does where does the money go? For example, one of I think one of these was a seven hundred and fifty dollar request, which is great that we're not spending the as their two thousand two hundred fifty dollars. So somebody allocated. didn't provide the match check and it just sat there. No. So for example, the 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 entrance or the submission that has seven hundred and fifty dollar request. Mm -hmm. I'm assuming we budgeted 3000 for every school. So they've left on the table $2,250. Where does that $2,250 go? Does it stay in the pool? And then we it just, just rolls over. Okay. And so mm -hmm. we just don't allocate as much next year out of the general budget um, Julie or whatever. Julie can probably control. talk about this. And we were talking about it today where it comes from. When they develop the budget, they automatically set a certain amount in there every year. Okay. So the, our match comes out of the general fund. Um, so if we don't spend it all, then it'll just be in, it'll go towards other expenses or ending fund balance to use next year. Uh, I think we fund it in fund 270. So if we don't spend everything in that fund, it doesn't need replenished as much. It's, it's all the same pool of money. It'll either roll forward or get used somewhere else. Okay, so just on my side, and maybe this is something that the board needs to talk about with a budget, I think we need very clear, either it rolls over and rolls forward, or it is used elsewhere and, re and reverted back. My preference would be that if we're going to have a grant program, that should never come back to the general budget. We share the general fund. When we budget it, it stays there. It's allocated. It's gone because I don't want to ever get to the point where then as a board, we're looking at it and we're saying, great, we want to sweep this account back. There's a miscommunication okay. there. So it's in fund 270. That's funded by grants, which are spent or the general fund, which are unrestricted. Okay. Once you put them in fund 270, it's restricted. Technically, if you can support that it's unrestricted general fund money, you can pull it back out, but you got to be careful doing that. So it won't need replenished as much if the schools don't use it, okay. but it's not like we're going to pull it out and use it somewhere else. It's in fund 270, the gift donation fund. Okay. In Thank you for that clarification. Cause that was kind of my worry is I, oh. I don't want it to be pulled back out. I don't want it to be swept. And if there is that general fund versus non-general fund, then I hope that we're spending the general fund first, because if we're if we're having this as an incentive, it's disingenuous. Every time I've seen any government fund swept, it's it's just disingenuous to say, hey, here's this money. Oh, sorry, we hit a road bump. We didn't budget well enough. We're taking it back now. I just I don't like that. If we're doing our jobs and we're being good fiscal agents, then we should budget properly. Yes, things happen. I get that. But um, I like the idea of this grant. So I appreciate those, those answers to the questions and that helps me a little bit. Thank you. Any other discussion before we move on, Mr. Anderson? I said real quick, I just want to make sure I'm, I'm understanding. So, basic, so basically it's already allocated. If we don't use it, it stays in that allocation, correct? Right, we put the money already in fund 270. I just want to make sure, just even farther, appreciate it. So, uh, just one thing, Cassie, if you could explain, <clears throat> there was a, a couple of comments about how sometimes the quotes don't match the amount that uh, we're asking for. And I believe sometimes that is because of uh, tax exemption status. Would you just clear that up? So uh, because even though they don't match, there's a reason why they, they may not necessarily match. And it's a good reason. It's not because of bad uh, bookkeeping. Yeah, and I think there's a couple examples I fixed. So, and there was an Amazon one in there. Obviously, a teacher doesn't have a business Amazon account. So, they're probably printing off a quote from their personal account, which isn't ours. So, it's not tax exempt. And then we also sometimes get incentives through Amazon through our business account. Um, the other one that was in there that was multiple quotes, um, she did have some mistakes in there. So, I did fix that. And I'll make sure that it matches during like the period that we're in right now, I, I haven't been quite a stickler because prices have been fluctuating so much that most likely I'm gonna eventually have to come back and say, hey, you were over or under, are you gonna contribute more? So, but I'll make sure that this next time that the budgets do match what their quote has been. 
So. And I appreciate that clarification because I tend to speak sometimes without thinking all the way through. And, and I didn't mean to imply that this people submitting this are, you know, unable to do proper bookkeeping, but I know that that's how it came out. And that's kind of what I said. So I, I stand corrected on that and I appreciate that. Thank you. All right, Madam Chair, we discussion. do we need it? I know it's an action item, but do we need a motion list? Because it seems that it says the board will review the grants and determine whether the incentives. Yes, okay. so we need we need a motion to approve. So, Madam Chair, move to approve the incentive grants as presented. I'll second. second. All right, we have a motion and a second. Any other discussion? All in favor of approval of the incentive, the spring incentive grants, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Nay, chair votes aye, and those grant applications are approved. All right, item 2.4, receipt review and possible approval of FY23 CTE competitive grant application. All right, and this says requires signatures from advisory technical skills committee for possible so, action. Yeah, so you all are the advisory technical skills committee. So I brought the application. Um, I'll also need a wet signature on it. I also brought Heather Steele today, just in case anyone has any questions about the proposal. Any questions? Go ahead, Susan. Um, on page 10, or at least on mine, it's page 10, just looking at the measurable outcomes, just a question. It, it's just a mean question. Um, it says, one of them says, graduation, graduation rates of all ECSD students will increase to exceed state graduation rates. Exceed by how much? Or just like one, like we just need to get over that um, that that level of where the state graduation rates are that fluctuates. Um, this grant is actually meant to kind of carry over for three years. Okay. So how? So just so we're exceeding it. Okay. Right now we're not there, and so this is an intention to help. Okay. Out. I just wanted to make sure I understood that that along yep. with the one above it. Um, will exceed the state determined performance level on proficiency exams. So same. Same thing, yeah. Okay. So it's a rolling, so the grant, the contract has been built out for three years, mostly because all of our CTE standards are changing over the next three years. So the work of the scope of work will be over the next three years as we build each kind of program area together. We'll start with health science this <clears throat> fall. So, but we need time to get that stuff implemented before we really start looking at those numbers because looking at this year's numbers wouldn't be reflective right. of the work that we're doing. Okay. And the students in the program as they're going through it. Okay, thank yeah. you. I just You're wanted welcome. to make sure I understood that. And the other thing, um, and maybe I just didn't find it in the reading, um, is West Ed, like you had to use West Ed or that's who you found that you wanted to use? Well, I was just so, curious. Um, in the, um, so it's not gonna be Wested, it's gonna be a company called Radiance Consulting. And the reason that is, is because Wested has a person on their staff that knows this work really, really, really well. Um, she has since left Wested. And so we will be working with her, with her private consulting company. Okay. Um, so, but yes, Wested, I got familiar with her because she's doing a lot of the school improvement work mm -hmm. at Elko High School. Mm -hmm. um, and as I was talking with her on her on the school work that we're doing at Elko High School, realized that she would be very, very well suited for this work um, because she has a CTE background, but she also has the academic side background. So, and um, has done this work before. So the reason that we chose West Ed was because that's the company that this particular person, Andrea Worthington works for, okay. but now she's since left West Ed. She's in the process of rewriting the scope of work, which okay. will look identically the same. It's just the logo yeah. on the front will look different. It'll be good to have her for that experience. Yeah. I know yeah. West Ed has been used a lot in yeah. like the PP and other entities. So I just wondered if you kind of had to choose that one or. Yeah, no, so thank we you. chose that one based on Andrea. Is great. Great. Yeah. Thank you. All right. Any other questions from the board or Madam Chair, just mm -hmm. following up with what Susan said, and please, anybody else have questions before I jump in? Go ahead. Dive in. All right. Thank you. The 23-24, so that's two years from now, correct? Correct. Okay. I'm just concerned that it says we will exceed 
state determined performance levels on all proficiency exams. I'm really a stickler with my kids on the term that just went out my head, but all and never and always. And those that's all is all. Yes. And you're confident that we can do this. Yes. So as measured by our Perkins indicators, um, we math reading and science are the all. Okay. Right. So the intention is that we start exceeding all of those, um, all of those. How close is the gap now? We're about four or five percent percentage points under. But each year, the state performance determined level or the state state determined performance levels increases. Mm -hmm. So right now, without my notes in front of me, I can't tell you it's somewhere around. 24 percent and we're right at hanging at 19 20 percent i think okay. over the last few years but again the last few years that we've been measuring them since they've come to be have been COVID years and so we don't really know what our numbers look like for those okay and so you're confident we can close the gap and keep up with the progress yep. perfect um thank you i appreciate that and with what you just said on the west ed and the radiance radiance consultant okay yep um, I appreciate that information. And again, I, I trust that we have professionals that are working for the district. I, I've been able to work with you. I know your standards and everything else. From a transparency standpoint, we do need to make sure, I think, that it's not just, oh, we're picking this person and wherever she goes, we go, even if that is because when it comes to the bids or whatever else, they are a preferred vendor. That's just something that I think we just need to, as a district, be more aware of, more cautious of, to I appreciate the explanation. That's great. But it needs to be that, that yes, these are the people we talked to and we didn't, you know, we, we chose this direction because they are preferred, because we do like working with them. If it hadn't been for her leaving, who else outside of West Ed did we visit with? Well, nobody and and i'm not so right right and yeah. so that's i i'm not necessarily expecting that answer and usually i try to get the cj heads up hey <laughs> have them be prepared for this because i'm going to ask them so i didn't do that today because i didn't know about that part but that's that's something that i just as a district i think we need to be aware of um i appreciate julie when when you went through the local you know we went to we tried three different ones we understand why we went with that i'm not saying we have to do three I, again, you guys are professionals. I, ex, I appreciate that, but we do need to say, okay, these are other people that we looked at and yeah, they can do other things, but we really like this one. I'm a customer service guy. I will easily stay with a vendor that provides me awesome customer service, even if it costs me an extra percent in the, on the bottom line, because I know that they're local, they can give me what I need. So preference is great. I just think we need to do a little bit more homework in the background to say, this is why they're my preference. Not just, I like them and I have not tried anything else. Yeah. Cool. Well. <laughs> All right. Thank you. <laughs> and that's, I guess, kind of more directed towards our new superintendent. Yeah. Noted. <clears throat> thank you, sir. Not to beat you up <laughs> on day one, hour one. <laughs> All right. Any other questions or go ahead. Oh, I was just going to say, so this is a competitive grant application. So this does not necessarily mean that it will be funded. The state has uh, four million ish dollars for these competitive grant applications. That's CTE program statewide, um, and one one particular district could probably consume all four million. So <laughs> we could too, though. Yeah, we could. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you for you know playing nice in the sandbox with the other districts. Yeah, you're welcome. All right, do we have any other questions or discussion or do we have someone who would like to make a motion? Well, just since Matt wanted to give me a little bit of a hard time, the you were the term you were looking for was absolutes. Thank you. You're absolutes. Welcome. That's the one. <laughs> Don't work in absolutes, yes. Um with that, it seems like I'm always making these motions, but I'm happy to continue with this. Um move to approve the FY23 CTE competitive grant application. We have a motion and a second. Any other discussion? All in favor of approval, please say aye. 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 Any opposed nay? Chair votes aye, and those are approved. Thank you.
Thanks. We'll keep, we'll keep our fingers crossed. Okay. Yes. yes. So yeah. do we need to have everyone sign before I they I just leave? need one signature. I'll just okay. give it to Cass and then. Perfect. Thank you. All right, we'll move on to item 3.1, which is our consent agenda. I move to approve the consent agenda. I'll second. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Any discussion? Brief discussion. Mm -hmm. My understanding is one of the students was in our district, moved out of our district, is now attending an online, and we're still getting the high set. If, am I understanding that correctly, Mr. Anderson? Uh, yes, we still got the application. So, are we um, my, allowed to approve it? <laughs> They're not our student, right? Yeah. So my so the the student, um, yes, as recently as last spring, about this time last spring, he was our student still, um, and then was in an, a, another online school, not our NNBA. Uh, I I don't know for sure if we have to be the ones, but I do know that in order for him to be able to enroll in uh, the the program to prepare for the high set, there has to be approval by a, a board of trustees. Um, and so I, I'm not sure if that's why he's coming to the local one or, uh, okay. My, uh, so I did talk to the registrar out in, at that school um, and uh, she indicated that he was directed uh, when, when the topic was brought to personnel at that online school that he was directed by that school to make contact with his like like where he lives that school district and that board of trustees in order to be able to do that so he was given the direction to turn it into us i don't know if that was just from that academy or if gbc also directed him to do that i was not involved in those conversations but i that's i can provide you the history of how we got that perfect i appreciate that and the there's the thing of not being able to track where people go. So therefore our graduations drop because we don't know where they went. Our graduation rates, I don't remember that term, but that's something in there, right? I'm not just crazy and making that up. Sometimes our graduation rates are low because we've lost students. Yes, it contributes. Okay. Mm -hmm. So this would help us to not, to find this student, right? He wouldn't be a lost, this Correct. If be a lost we know he okay. enrolled in the high set prep program and then we wash our hands and we're that, like, great, somebody, uh, okay, yeah, great. So somebody we, else's camera. We would know where he ended up, yes. Okay, great. Can, okay, okay. That, and that was a, a kind of another question. So this is... Uh, to be able to enroll in the adult education program, that is an offer kind of scopes program students in adult education uh, if they're under 18, our health will come to students that we now have some control and traction for preparing for graduation, hoping to make sure that they do graduate, um, receive state funding again, or we can get that. Great. Okay. Thank you. Because that was my next part of that was, do we get something out of this being enrolled or is it enrolling in some other district? So great. I appreciate that. Thank you very much. And I have no further questions and support the motion. All right. Any other questions on the consent agenda? I just have a comment that is that paperwork electronic as well. <laughs> it's so hard to read some of that writing. Like I couldn't tell the school, it's like, what are they talking about? So maybe for next year, like I know this doesn't need to be tomorrow, but can we move towards, and maybe it already is and people aren't using the electronic version. I just can't read handwriting anymore. It's a little bit of both. Some of Plus our farms that skill of reading yeah, handwriting. Some of those farms people turn into us are fillable, and they just love to print and write on them. Um, and yeah, so got to move with the technology. Oh, I'm with you. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Any other questions, or would we like to move forward with the motion? Call for the question. We had a motion. Oh, we had the motion. Okay, thank yep, you. Sorry. Thank you. Good. All right. Good. All in favor, please say aye. 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 <laughs> Any opposed nay? Chair votes aye, and the consent agenda is approved. Thank you for calling for the question. Item 4.1 is a report from our NASB director. Well, a couple of things. Uh, got an email today that uh, Dr. Deb Oliver had, has resigned. That'll be effective uh, April 30th. She's the executive director of the state. Uh, and he's yeah 
and ESB. Um, they've called an emergency board meeting Friday night. Uh, so I'll be doing that virtually and I'll get back with you on what happens there. Uh, I would also add everybody's got an email and thanks Cassie for helping me get that out that uh, there's a virtual training for new trustees uh, available on March 12th. That's available online. Um, there's also an in-person training. I, I won't be able to attend that, uh, but uh, that's what's going on with uh, NASB this time around. So like I say, I'll keep you updated on what happens with that board meeting this, this weekend. Do they know who's gonna take her place? I haven't heard anything other than, uh, and I believe that email went out to all of us. Okay. So check curious. that, that came out uh, this uh, sometime today. So I was just caught up on that as I was sitting down. All right. Jeff, do you any have questions? any idea on the training itself? Is that similar to what we went through in November? It's, or is it something different? Um, it, it's it's additional to it. I have it right here on my email. I can pull up uh, on the update if you check. It just didn't seem to give a whole lot of information versus what we already had. The new trustee training are invited to attend an overview session on governance and your role as a school board trustee with Deb Dudley. That'll be held virtually on Saturday, March 12th at 9 a.m. Okay. Thank you. And the... In person one was certainly interesting. There's no way I can attend in person if that happens to migrate more eastward and involve right. some of the other districts. Then I'd be happy to to try to go in person. I had to weigh the same it. thing: the trip to Reno right. for a couple hour session. It, it's I hate that along, it, but, that'd be great. Uh, uh, but yeah, they were talking on setting and maintaining goals, which we've done quite a bit of that. How to communicate them to constituents, and then the. Uh, interactive section for trustees for to plan future community meetings. So, and I felt like we touched on that in November uh, at our training session. So I didn't feel as bad in making that call to probably not. And now that I got gas today, it make even more, <laughs> <laughs> more sense to probably, uh, you know, sit that one out. So. Is there any way they can do it through Zoom? Like, why aren't they doing it? I was kind of curious uh, about that. Um, you know what? Maybe I'll fire off an email to that, and then I'll uh, see what an answer to that. Maybe we can watch. That's a good idea. And, you know, and then I'll get back and, and see if we can't uh, get that open. And I think that's some good guidance to give to, to our NASB directors to perhaps make a few more things available virtually. Yes. For well, now it won't be COVID. Number of reasons. Be, like you said, it'll be gas prices. I'm like, okay, when it's four fifty a gallon, I'm like, and I can do it through Zoom. I I know it's not the same. I, but I'm not a I'd huge fan of Zoom. I'm glad it's there, but I mean, in that one meeting where I had to participate in a parking lot here, I I just I feel like it's much better to be in person and see everybody. <laughs> but yeah, again, going to Reno for uh, just a couple things that we've covered. Uh, in November, I'm not saying by any stretch of the imagination, I'm an expert, but uh, we have touched on those items and I feel confident moving forward, so. All right, any guidance or other questions for our NASB director? All right, we'll just wait for your report yeah. after that emergency meeting. All right, we'll move on to item 4.2, items from board members. Is there anyone well, I, I'll speak to it. The gas prices. Uh, I got gas at Costco yesterday in Salt Lake City. It was three seventy one, and then today on the way here it was four twenty seven in Wells. And I'm seeing that uh, that may keep rising. It will keep rising. Let's be honest. And I'm a little worried budget wise. Just uh, I know that we go through a lot of fuel. Uh, a lot of petroleum-based stuff, whether it be propane, whether it be uh, uh, gasoline for the buses and travel and things like that. So I'm a little concerned about that and would hope that we uh, are okay with budget-wise to make it through that. But that's going to be something we're going to have to look at going forward. Mm -hmm. that's, that's all I had. And basically, that was my question as well as on the budget how much of a leeway do we have with diesel and transportation? Um, I don't know that, well, two years ago, we didn't think there'd be a pandemic. And a year ago when we were making the budget, I don't know that we necessarily thought that we'd have a 
conflict in Europe, but um, do we have room in the budget for diesel changes? Well, and not just diesel, as Jeff said, I mean, all petroleum products, but. Um, we'll have to check. And if I have another um, opportunity to do a budget augment in June. So okay. if, if something needs shuffled around, we'll, we'll look at that. But yeah, we'll have to keep an eye on it and maybe up our budget for next year. Just fill up our tanks right now. Yeah. <laughs> I wish I'd have done it yesterday. <laughs> Quick question on that with, and this, I don't even know, CJ, if you'll be able to answer this, but when we had COVID, we had to have less students on the buses, correct? Have we modified our transportation schedules to allow for increased students? I don't want to pack them in like sardines, but I remember riding into Elko from Spring Creek three to a seat when I was in school, not that, you know, oh, the good old days, but yeah, before we had Spring Creek schools, we rode in, you know, three to a seat. So is that something that we've looked at? Um, I, I don't believe we've changed uh, student loads on the buses. Those routes were, have been established and drivers driving those routes. Um, I'd be happy to reach out to Seth Canning, who is our uh, transportation director and uh, and ask him if they have, <laughs> Tensions of doing that, or if they're waiting until the year ends and reestablish route, there, there's a lot that goes into changing your entire transportation schedule. Right. Um, even just with one campus, never mind when you have to collaborate with all the campuses in town, so to speak. Um, so, uh, probably uh, not a quick pivot with that. Um, so, I'll, I'll, I'll get in touch with him about uh, what he's thinking about that, and I'll, I can just send you a notification. And I'm certainly not advocating that we do that necessarily just something that we're asking about because um, obviously concentrated you made it better sounded better but a concentrated load um, impacts our drivers but there's going to be a huge impact to families as well if all of a sudden it's okay great you're now getting picked up five minutes later or you know another stop altogether so okay thank you just asking the questions yeah we'll, we'll aim for efficiency both with fuel and money and bodies in a bus and yep great thank you madam chair i'm finished i have nothing else okay thank oh. you any other items from board members i do yeah oh go ahead ira because i have a um, long one <laughs> I, I brought this up a couple of years ago and since then i think there's been five different people sitting down there so is that. <laughs> <laughs> but um i went to a seminar once and a guy talked about having a student on the mm -hmm. like a school board member and uh picked by this you know from by the schools we want to figure out some way to do it so it wasn't a popularity contest but they didn't get to vote but they sat up here at the dais with the rest of the board members and were involved in the, in the process and i'm kind of glad it didn't go through because it would have been pretty tough on a kid to drag them through what we went through last fall and but i think we're, we're moving forward out of this pandemic and and it's something I'd like to try to move forward on if you were are you are you are you asking me to pursue that is the board directing me to find a student to sit on board meetings well, well what action would you like come up with a, a process to where students would run for an election and and get voted on and and uh, the superintendent committee could facilitate that. I, if it's. So I think maybe the way we do this as this is a non-action item is we ask Mr. Anderson to bring maybe a presentation to the board on how that might take place. And then as a board, we discuss it and move forward from there. Does that sound reasonable to everyone? Yes, thank you. I, okay. I like that right. part of it and I would agree I mean, I agree with the sentiment of what Ira's saying. Absolutely. I think that would be awesome to have one of our students up here um, giving their in input. So maybe not in the next two weeks, but if if in a reasonable time frame, you could come back and give us an idea. <laughs> <laughs> Just, um, would you like it to always be the same student or would you well, would like be, me to pursue a rotating basis? Like something that they run for in the spring and and then see them in the fall and it okay. 
like a year term and all right nine month term you know a school year term so a plan for how to elect a current junior or younger um to be next year's mm-hmm. sitting student board member or something like that okay if this guy given in the presentation of this seminar he was he did go into more details i can't remember all the details but it was it was an interesting they had students go on from that onto a lot bigger and a bigger things just because of the exposure of it would be an invaluable opportunity for a student for sure. And then I think, um, and I know we, none of us would be surprised, but I, I, I still think even though you would expect not to be surprised, you will still be surprised at the type of input you might get from a student of that caliber who could come up here and speak to their perspective. And we're making all these decisions for the best interest of kids. Um, and yeah, I think it'd be good to have the voice of a kid. Sounds great. Love to do it. All right, any other? Susan, you said you had some things. Thank you, Eric. Can I tease Matt for a minute? I'm going to kind of take some time here. Matt. Please. No, I, I've, yeah, it's all you. Okay. Um, <clears throat> I'll start with the STARS program. We announced that Chris Murphy from Spring Creek High School and Shannon Downey from Flagview Intermediate School were our um, STARS, awarded the STARS. Um, let me get my notes. So STARS is Staff and Teachers Achieving Results with Students, and it's just a recognition program. And uh, Mr. Anderson presented them with their Amazon gift certificates and flowers on March 1st. Uh, I would like to, if you don't mind, I know it's a little bit long. It's been in the paper, but I would like to read what this anonymous person <laughs> wrote about Chris Murphy. Um, He's an animation drafting instructor and he was nominated by a colleague that wants to remain anonymous. But I just, for the record, would like to read this. Mr. Murphy has been an integral part of Spring Creek High School for many years. From the first year the school opened, he has worked tirelessly to build the skill of his students. Students from his class have gone on in the field to careers for which they were well prepared for in his room. Over the span that Mr. Murphy has been teaching drafting and design, the industry has undergone drastic changes, moving from paper and pencil to fully automated and computerized. He has stayed abreast of the industry, continually developing his skills and acquiring new technology to ensure that his students have access to and experience with the tools they will encounter in the workplace. Currently, his courses include the use of lasers, 3D modeling and printing, computer-aided drafting and design and architecture using industry products like AutoCAD and Chief Architecture. His classroom and labs are a positive and motivating environment where all students are valued and encouraged to excel. Mr. Murphy has been the advisor for the skills program at the school for 28 years. The program has grown and flourished over that time. And this year, the club serves over 60 students and has earned dozens of awards. Outside of typical duties, Mr. Murphy produces hundreds of silkscreen t-shirts for virtually every organization on campus and many others around the area. He can be found working on shirts after school hours to meet the need. He served for years as the building tech guy, maintaining equipment and instructing staff in its use. Even after the district employed new full-time staff to meet that need, he's been our emergency expert in all types of tech-related situations. Mr. Murphy also recognized the shortage of bus drivers to transport students on school-sponsored trips and has served the students as a driver for many years, driving not only the skills team, but also many other organizations and teams. Last year, there was a vacancy for a union rep at Spring Creek High School, and Mr. Murphy stepped up to fill that need. He's actively sought ways to support other teachers and staff in this role, lending experience and insight, as well as compassion and support to all of the teachers at Spring Creek High School. We're gonna miss him because he's retiring, but I just wanted to get that out there. And then for Shannon, I'd like to read hers as well. She's the school finance secretary at Flagview. Shannon is always several steps ahead of us here at Flagview. She has a pleasant demeanor and is always easy to work with. 
She goes above and beyond for our school and the district to do what's best for students, parents, and staff. Anytime we have a question, she either knows the answer or will get the answer. Shannon is fantastic and deserves to be recognized for her outstanding work ethic and integrity. So just a little background that the committee had some tough choices to make because there were some uh, great nominations and unfortunately they can't all uh, be awarded, but that's okay. Um, so I would like to just shout out to the committee. Um, we have a person representing every community. So Sandra Egan represents Oahe. Lori Gilbert um, is our media person and she's been a good help because she's served on this committee before. So it's good to have her experience. Melinda Harris is out in Carlin. Tom Kleinschmidt, I think I pronounced that right. He's a yeah. West Wendover. And Adam Minter is um, Northside, uh, PTA president, but he represents Elko. Lucy Pope is out at Spring Creek. She's a PTA president. Michelle Rodriguez is in Wells. Maria Salas is in Jackpot. So we've got everybody represented. And um, just to put it out there, these don't have to, the nominations can come from the public. Uh, you don't even have to have, you know, just someone you know of, you can nominate them. Um, staff can nominate, um, students can nominate if they wish. Um, just want to throw that out there. And, and the more detail you can give the committee, um, some of them, it was hard for them to choose really because they don't know the person. So they're they're going off that, um, what somebody has written. So um, just be aware of that. And then to shout out to For the Flowers by Tanya Kump at Evergreen Flower and Gift Shop and the gift cards from LP Insurance, Print and Copy and the Federal Elko Federal Credit Union. So I appreciate the help with those. So we're off to a good start. Sorry, not quite done. <laughs> That's why I was teasing Matt. I'm like, not quite done yet. Nominations are open for April. So uh, you can just visit the website under human resources. And we do have an electronic form. <laughs> <laughs> and they can't even turn in a written one. So it has to be electronic. And we have been meeting by Zoom. Um, and it was perfect because I can put the nominations in a spreadsheet, send it to them through email, they can look it over, and then we have our meeting so that it doesn't go too long for them since they're volunteering their time. So that was good. Um, and I just wanted to say um, a shout out to Spring Creek Elementary, Sage, and Liberty Peak for their Olympics that they had. That was really fun to watch. Um, and the Treasure Island play um, was it was interactive with the audience. So I've never attended something like that. And that was a lot of fun. Um, watched the Elko High School. They had a watch party for the basketball because I didn't go down there. Um, for reading week, I got to, I had the privilege of going to Southside to read, Owyhee to read, um, Mountain View. And I have to say the kids, they were all, they were all so well behaved while being read to. Um, I just can't say that enough. And it is just so fun to get out to those classrooms and see the good things that are going on and what the teachers are doing. I met with the principal of SAGE today as well. And, and just, the, just the effort that those teachers that they're putting together of, hey, we know we have kids that are low because of learning online, those types of things. And they're coming up with such creative ways to go and try to get them back on track. And so it's just, I appreciate all the work that everyone is doing to help make kids successful. Really appreciate it. So I think I think I got everything off of my <laughs> my list. So Can I jump you. in on one thing? So um, the STARS nomination form, it you have to go to the, um, on the website, you have to go to the human resources page and scroll down and that's where the nomination form is found. It's not just front and center on the main page, but. So we're trying to work on that. Departments, human resources, that's where you'll find it. Kayla was working up if we can put it somewhere else that for employees, it kind of makes sense there, but if you're like a parent, it doesn't, it's a little odd place. So we'll work on that. So thank you. Thank you for allowing me the time. <laughs> Thank you. All right. Any other items from board members? All right. Did you have anything? I'm just going to go ahead to item 5.1 unless somebody really STEM wants to fair. hop in. 
is this week, if I recall correctly. So I encourage, to, unless you're bringing that up under yours. I was I going to give specific, specifics. Yes. Oh, great. All right, well, we'll go to item 5.1, our Perfect. superintendent's report. Go. So I don't know if you've heard of STEM fair or not. <laughs> um, you're, you're, you're bright, Matt. I appreciate you. Um, so STEM fair, yeah, STEM fair started today uh, or yesterday. I apologize. It's, it's already Tuesday. It started yesterday. Um, so yesterday and today, there was a lot of logistics, getting stuff there, getting things judged. Um, tomorrow from 5 to 8 p.m. is the official uh official time when when families community members anyone can can go and check that out uh, so those will my understanding is those will be uh, mostly be judged and and you can walk on through I'll, I'll be walking through um my my daughter's got a project there so I'm excited to to go celebrate her there um she was the tiny one that could barely be heard on the microphone tonight <laughs> from flag view that was that's my little girl um but uh yeah students will be coming through uh throughout the day tomorrow as well uh there's an award ceremony on on thursday night we uh, y'all got an envelope with uh, that has that invitation in there so um that that'll be the award ceremony and yeah it's a great opportunity just to see the the innovation and the, the fun kind of projects that kids have come up with i've I've been able to see what projects kids have come uh, come up with from a couple of different schools, but uh, you know, just in those two schools, it's like wow, I, I I've never never heard of that before, and I'm I'm not like a science nerd or anything, but um, I've you, you you would think that by the time you get to a certain age, you would have seen all the science projects that kids can come up with, um, and they they continue to 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 surprise you just as kids tend to do. So uh, I think you'll enjoy it. So five to eight tomorrow. Um, maybe run into you there. A uh, few other things. Um, had a great experience down in Las Vegas with our basketball teams. Uh, I've spoken at length, whether through you know publishing things or just telling people and writing emails. And uh, really proud of our students, our community. Our community was awesome. Um, when you're down in Vegas and you're there for a basketball tournament, even when your team isn't playing, like you just kind of, I don't know, there's not like a lot to do for me in vegas by myself so i just I, I was at a lot of basketball games and i tell you what um there was and there was some pretty good there was some good community support from other schools but you know maybe i'm biased but i i don't recall any single game being as well attended as as any elko county game so when spring creek was playing elko county all over the place when elko was playing elko county everywhere when Owyhee was playing it was packed like the place was full with elko county it wasn't just elko or spring creek it was elko county and it was evident um, and they were cheering each other on and it was awesome. There were kids that I knew that graduated in Wells a year or two ago that were there cheering on Elko High School's basketball team because they're friends and they know each other and it was exciting for them to see their buddies there. So just a, just a good overall experience um, for, I, I did get a couple of questions from people, wait, wrestling's being recognized, why, why not basketball? They just won state championship and, and I, I'm letting people know that, they are all so awesome in their own accomplishments. I did not want to, we did not want to bungle them all into one big thing uh, to win a state championship. Um, and for both of those teams that won the state championship, it's been a long time since that's happened. I uh, really wanted to give them the proper uh, attention and not kind of yell over each other kind of situation. Plus we had a very full boardroom to pack a couple more basketball teams in might've been, <laughs> might've been precarious. So uh, we, we are intending on recognizing our, our, our basketball accomplishments at the next board meeting. So uh, stay tuned for that. Uh, Susan mentioned reading week, so I won't go into that anymore, but it was, it was an awesome week. I wish I could have made it to more schools, but it was, it was great to be at the, the one I went to and, and uh, just thank you to everyone. We had anywhere from board members to me to uh, central office personnel uh, just lots of people were out in our schools, parents, individual. My, my wife went and read at one of our kids' classes. I, I know there were people everywhere doing that, and we didn't get a picture of everyone, but thank you to everyone who uh, helped our kids develop a love of literacy. Um, I, it was so much fun. I wish I could, wish that was my job, to read the kids <laughs> all day. Um, this is okay, too, though. Thank you for your uh, support. <laughs> um, <clears throat> You could give me direction to read to more classes if you want, Ira. If you want to give me something to do, then, then I'd have to do it more. Uh, all right. Jokes aside, um, 
so the couple of major things that we're working on a lot right now, uh, staffing is um, it's becoming, we're getting to that time of year where it's going to be time to really start gearing up. And we've already made quite a lot of efforts in that area. I uh, just want to let the community know and, and, you know, I'll be on a radio show on Thursday and I will talk about applying to be an Elko County School District employee. Uh, we have a lot of postings out already. Um, we've been working uh, quite frequently with our site administrators to make sure we know what our needs are uh, to, um, yeah, just to get on top of that so we're not pushing it late in the game. Uh, well, we will have quite a few positions to fill, but we are already, I mean, I don't, I don't know the number off the top of my head because it's too many to to count on these hands how many we've already hired in the last uh, couple few weeks. So we already first between campuses and then brand new teachers or, or people coming in from outside that are uh, looking to be in Elko County next year. So we're working on that and we'll continue to do so. Um, last kind of, and, and I'll probably spend a little bit of time on this, um, is uh, our COVID mitigation plan. So um, we hit a pretty nice um, milestone last week. So uh, <clears throat> We had, you know, when we started last week, we still had about four or five schools um, that were on outbreak status. We all anticipated those would be ending soon. Um, and uh, and then we were right. They ended <laughs> later that week. Uh, just wanted to, just for the sake of transparency, wanted to make sure people understood because uh, with so many, the bar changed a lot throughout COVID and we all saw that. And that's a, that's a frustration that everybody shares. I don't think anyone loved how often the information changed. Uh, but um, a common misconception was that uh, outbreak declared on X day, count 28 days, outbreak over. And that is not, nor was it ever, um, the way an outbreak was determined to be over, uh, just so people are clear. Um, an outbreak is declared, and then, and then that is considered, uh, you know, typically an outbreak would be declared during a cluster or a spike of COVID positive cases. So from the time that cluster or spike of cases ended, that next day would be what they call day zero in the medical world. And then from there, 28 days out is when a outbreak would end. So uh, most schools um, would never have it done in exactly 28 days because there would the cluster has to finish first. Uh, so Elko High had a rather long one. Theirs was about 40-ish days, I want to say. Um, and that's because their their cluster continued on for quite a while after the outbreak was declared. It, it never really went away for a little bit. So in the end, we got them all out. All our schools are, are off outbreak status, and that's exciting. I know we're all pretty happy about that. So, uh, But I did, uh, because there was some misunderstanding about how that happens, um, we 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 did have frequent like weekly sometimes more than once a week meetings with the epidemiologists and they would let us know hey they're on a good track should be happening soon and i think we got a little excited when they say happening soon our brains are automatically going to default to oh next week they said, they said soon <laughs> um soon is a very relative term and so uh, soon was not quite soon enough sometimes but they're all out now um which which is a good lead into the covid mitigation plan uh, the um, with Directive 52, when the governor announced that masks were no longer mandatory, but outbreak schools had to stay in outbreak, there were several pieces of the um, of that directive that required us to do some stuff from the school district side. And I just want to read those real quick. Um, Section four of Directive 52 stated that the school district must include a policy on whether or under what circumstances face coverings will be required for students and staff while in school buildings or on school campuses. Uh, the plan must include a regular COVID-19 testing program and the plan must include a method for detecting school-wide outbreaks of COVID-19 and a plan for responding to and mitigating the outbreaks. So uh, we submitted a plan and then it was sent back and we submitted it again and it was sent back and we submitted it again um, because we had to, so we submitted it to DHHS. Um, essentially what they were trying to do is transition everything we've been doing because up to this point, it's been, you, you've heard it a lot. Our local health authority, DHHS said this, DHHS said that, right? And everyone got tired of DHHS. Um, even though I have a lot of appreciation for the help they provided us, there were some time, you know, that, that's how we felt. We, we wanted to have our own local control was the, was the phrase that kept coming out. And so once the outbreaks were declared over um, and we had to have a plan in place, we, um, 
we submitted a plan for basically our own local control of this. Um, so some, it's about a, it's a six page document. It's on our district website, um, and the plan details how we are going to locally control um, any potential, you know, any future possible happenings when it comes to COVID. Um, I will not uh, read all six pages. You are welcome to read that. If you have any questions, Matt, I'd be happy to answer them. Um, but a, a couple, some main highlights I just want to make sure I share with you because they are significant um, are that uh, certain mitigation efforts um, will only happen now under when a school is designated to be an outbreak status. Um, an example of that is contact tracing. We will not be required to, nor will we engage in contact tracing or case investigation unless we are under a state of outbreak in a school. Um, face coverings only required during outbreak status. Um, isolation protocols are still have to happen if someone has a confirmed positive case. Uh, but even when an isolation case occurs, um, we provide parents with the information about how to, like if they want to inform their close contacts, if, if they want to go get tested, here's the resource. You do what you want to do with this. Um, and we give them control over how to how to handle that situation. Um, we will, uh, let's see, what else? A very significant change is that uh, up until this point, if anyone, there was like a list of a bunch of symptoms, right? Which a lot of us would equate with many things other than COVID, but the reality was at the height of the pandemic and until very recently, if you had a headache, there was a chance you were getting sent home. If you had, a fever, you were definitely getting sent home. If you had a sore throat, you were going home um, because that's what the rules were. Um, what we've done now is we are reverting back to our pre-pandemic uh, evaluation of illnesses. Nurses have nurses have always evaluated for illness at our schools. That's that's happened for a long, long time, and they're going back to how they used to do that before COVID. So a, a symptom does not equal being sent home necessarily. Um, uh, except for fever and <laughs> vomiting and things like that. Those, those always end up in going home or typically they do. But um, the, the, long story short, they're doing what they did before COVID in regards to evaluating illness in children. Um, let's see the COVID testing program. Uh, it says we have to have a regular testing program. So we acquired that Optima Medicine, um, one that I've detailed before. So that will continue to, they, they are gonna continue to make their rounds every week at schools. We will make that available to everyone. We will make announcements so that people know when it's happening. We will reach out to organizations to let them know, hey, don't forget if you want to, it's here at such and such time, uh, but no organization, no team, no anyone will be required to test. Uh, we will simply have that option available for people who want to do that. And outbreaks uh, will be determined by Elko County School District only. Um, we, we will determine for an outbreak or not. Uh, we did have to come up with a threshold uh, along with DHHS. We developed that together. And what that boils down to is um, I'll give you where we are now and what it was before. So now it is if 8% of a campus has positive cases all at the same time. Uh, so within a, I want to say it's a 14 day time period, it might be seven. Um, again, it's a long document. I can't remember exactly. Um, it's 8% of, uh, yeah, it doesn't have the time frame in front of me, but it's 8%, which is a big number. Uh, oftentimes it's a big number for, for just a frame of reference at an Elko high of about 1200 kids. Uh, that's around a hundred. My math isn't awesome, but I think 8% of 1,200 is 960, from something like that. So I'm looking at you. I don't know why I'm looking at you. <laughs> so somewhere it's close to, a, uh, it's close to um, what the end of the day, about 100 kids or so. Um, th there's a joke that you never try to do math live, and, and that just applied right there. So... <laughs> Um, Confirm though, yes. <laughs> yes. Okay, cool. Uh, so about 100 kids uh, at, at a Wells where you have 350 kids. If 10% is 35, we're looking at somewhere around 30 kids. You would need 30 active cases all at once. So, um, you know, never say never because absolutes, but um, that's, I think that's a very reasonable number. Uh, the reason I believe it's reasonable before we were finding ourselves going into outbreak quickly, uh, it, before it was, um, they were working with 
it could be, it had to be a certain percentage of a core group. So that could be of a, of a team, of a class, of uh, a pod of kids. So if, 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 any, if they were seeing transmission within a certain core group, then that would be reason enough to go into outbreak uh, up to this point. So for us, it is simply the entirety of the campus, 8% or more, then we would have to contact DHHS and let them know that we are entering outbreak and, and masking and all that. But um, that is the plan. Uh, it was approved. The plan is visible for anyone to see. Everything else in the plan uh, is very much a lot of just verbiage that you've seen, like talks about all the mitigation efforts. We still have air filtration systems in the classes. We're still doing increased cleaning, touch, uh, high touch surfaces, a, a lot of those things that that we that we do it ha has in there how you go through a, an isolation so that it's, it's six pages but um uh, but a lot of that is stuff you've you've seen a lot already um we're just organizing it differently and most importantly it's it is now under the oversight of elko county school district and and not a state entity hundreds of miles away um and that is everything i had thank you very yep. much yeah, that sounds great it is it is good to hear local control when it comes to this because this has been a long road all right any questions or guidance for mr anderson i do actually go ahead um so <clears throat> thank you for all that work that you put into um just to be clear ultimately though it still all falls under the current mandate and we have those mitigations to cor correct is that the current, the current uh, numbered mandate, I can't remember which number it is. This is 52. Directive 52. There you go, yes. Yeah, so under Directive 52, um, you know, they rescinded a lot of things from 48 was the one that was kind of driving everything. You know, there were other ones in between, but 48 was the one that really affected our schools. So 52 got rid of a lot of things from 48. And then the main part of 52 was each district, you will make a plan and you will be responsible for enacting that plan. Um, the only time that you would lose your local control is if it is discovered that you are not doing what you said you would do in your plan. Um, so that's uh, ev almost everything else in 52 is that we're going to have our own plan and, and do it. So it stays, but I'm just saying until that, until we hit 53. <laughs> I think I understand what you're saying. Um, are you asking when this would all go away? Yeah, but, yeah, that would be a good question. The my understanding is the only way this all goes away is when the governor declares the state of emergency as over. Then anything associated with a directive tied to that emergency would be null at that point as well. But until then, we're we're working on the plan now. Okay. Hope to avoid 66. <laughs> Just saying. <laughs> Me too. Order if our, 66 or our legislature could say that you know, there, mandates well, that are is, no yeah. longer yes. yeah, unless it, legal yeah, unless and allowed, but yeah, neither the Supreme Court nor the legislature has enforced their separation of power duties on this in the way that most of Elko County would have liked. Yeah. So, um, so yeah, I, I guess the Supreme Court could say, of Nevada, could say, nope, you're good, we're done or the legislature could, but um, if there are any members of the legislature or the Supreme Court watching, Elko County would really appreciate it if you would do that, for sure. All right, any other items on the superintendent's report? All right, we'll move on to item 6.1, approval of the accounts payable. <laughs> yes, ma'am. <laughs> if there's no one else, I'm happy to jump right in there. Jump in. Uh, Julie, at the top of page two, there's an indication under a banana, two Bonanza Produce uh, purchases that indicate FFVP. I don't know if I have asked that before, and I looked back through the handy dandy um, document that CJ created, and I didn't see it in there either. Please remind me or inform me as to what FFVP is. Oh, that's fresh fruit and vegetable program. So if 50% of a school is eligible for free and reduced lunch in elementary school, they get federal money for fruit and vegetables. Okay. Is this through the USDA program? I think so. Okay. All right. In, okay. All right. Yeah. In the senior world, that's okay. So now I know what it is. Perfect. Great. Thank you. I appreciate that. 
we talked about this earlier. And so I just want to confirm. Uh, let's see, I think it's towards the bottom of page two. $9,778.19 payable to K Park Rec Corporation. That's the grant that was the match from the fall session of the incentive grant out of West Wendover, correct? So in December, a round of incentive grants were approved. So West Wendover's was for the bleachers and baseball mound and clay maintenance. So we got the receipt, the match. So this check is paying that out okay. for the bleachers. Great. When I saw the amount, I just like, whoa, wait, what is that? So we got the amount, send it off. It just passed through. We're good. Um, and of course we added our so 3,000. Partial. So this is the 9,000 match. And then we still have our 3,000 to apply to the mound and the maintenance. Great. Okay. Madam Chair, I am finished. Thank you. Oh. All right. Thank you. Any other <laughs> any other questions? Or, I actually did I have, have a question regarding oh, that item two. I believe the city of West Wendover actually added some money to to that. And how is that handled? How do you? Well, that's the nine thousand. They're the ones that paid the match. Got it. Okay, so that matches that amount. Got it. Can I ask a question about insurance? And I, maybe I've asked it before. Is it typical that you're advancing that kind of money? Like this has come up a lot. So is this just that kind of year or is this just normal? Kind of both. So the district has advanced for a, a long time, but usually it was 250,000, 500,000. So this last couple of years between COVID and having just a few big claims, it's needed more. Okay. We're hoping to get caught up by June because we have over a million in grants for COVID claims. So, okay. Thank kind you. Kind of both. Hopefully, that. it mellows out. Okay. All right, anything else on the accounts payable? How would you like to proceed? I move to approve the accounts payable for March 8, 2022. Second. All right, we have a motion and a second in discussion. Abstentions, disclosures on that particular item. All right, all in favor of approving the accounts payable on March 8th, for March 8th, 2022, please say aye. 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 Any opposed nay? Chair votes aye, and those are approved. We have two other items. Madam Chair, move to approve the board member reimbursement accounts payable for March 8th, 2022. Second. Thank you, we have a motion and a second. I have a disclosure. All right. That's my name on that one. <laughs> uh, that's two months uh, mileage. It's not one month, that's two. It's combined uh, for travel to meetings. Mm -hmm. All right. So you're disclosing that that is and, you and, and I will be abstaining. abstaining. All right. yes. Thank you. All right. All we have a, an abstention. All in favor of approving that, please say aye. Aye. Any opposed, nay? Chair votes aye, and that is approved. We have one more item. Madam Chair, move to approve the Wells Rural Accounts Payable for March 8, 2022. Second. Thank you. We have a motion and a second. I will be disclosing that I have a family member who is an employee of Wells Rural Electric, so I will also abstain. Any other discussion on that item? All in favor of approval of the Wells Rural, Elect Wells Rural Accounts Payable, please say aye. 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 Any opposed nay? Sounds like that motion carries as well. Item 7.1 is input from the public. Is there anyone who wishes to make a comment or would you like to all just go home and have dinner and finish the day? Thank you, Julie. Let's go home. <laughs> all right. No one wishes to stand up. We appreciate you coming. This meeting is adjourned. Thank have you. Have a wonderful evening. All right. I'll sign this. <laughs>